Hey guys, this is Jared with Lightshine 3D Services. Today I'm going to show you something you might find really useful um, if you like creating solid geometry. And what I mean is um, geometry that has um, good solid dimensions. It's dimensionally accurate. This is something you would typically do in a CAD software um, rather than Corel Draw, although it's possible in Corel Draw. Um, I'm a I'm a CAD guy. I had a background in CAD, teaching AutoCAD and Inventor and uh, 3D modeling and engineering design to high school students for 10 years um, before I started doing this awesome stuff. Um, so I'm used to CAD software, but if you're not, um, know that you can use a program like AutoCAD or Autodesk Fusion 360 in this case um, to create some really good geometry that can be imported into Corel Draw. Now, I'm gonna skip a whole bunch of cool stuff um, and just get right to the details here of what I'm doing. I'm gonna show you how to create a gear, um, an actual working gear that you could cut on your laser and uh, cut with another series of gears um, to create a gearbox or some sort of drivetrain um, for either robotics application or clock or some something. Um, so the way you do this is in Fusion 360, you just start it up. You don't have to go into sketches or anything. We're just going to go up here to add-ins and we're going to go to scripts and add-ins. These are already built in. They just don't show up as their own toolbars. They're just listed together in scripts and add-ins. Scroll down to the bottom, you're going to see spur gear twice. Doesn't matter which one you click on, just double click on one of them. This dialog box that comes up here is going to give you some information about spur gears. Um, and then as you, as you start reading these um, parameters that are here, um, you're going to notice a few things. These numbers, when one's changed, it changes other things here, uh, specifically the pitch diameter. The pitch diameter is going to be the diameter of the gear um, where the teeth mesh together with the other gear, um, with a mating gear. Um, in this case, I have a 12 inch gear here simply because I have 24 teeth, but the diametral pitch, which is going to be the distance or the number of teeth in each one inch of uh, circumference of the gear. Um, so if you go around this gear one inch, you're only gonna see two teeth. So if I change that to a larger number, something like eight um, as my diamet a diametral pitch, I'm gonna see that my pitch diameter has now changed down to three. Um, it's just the, the math formula, it works all this out. Um, so you can tweak this however you want. I'm going to put this in at 10, and you're going to see that it tells me that this root fillet radius is too large. That's going to be the little radius right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is bump that down to a number within the range that it tells me there, which 0 0.05 will suffice. And then when I click OK, I can change the gear thickness if I wanted to. It doesn't matter. I'm going to make this a half inch gear because we're just going to use it for the surface of the sketch anyway. All right, so here's my gear. Um, this is all in 3D. This is what parametric modeling does. Um, I'm not quite done though. To export this into Corel Draw or import it into Corel Draw, I'm going to need to create a new sketch. So I just go up here to the Create Sketch button, click on the surface of this gear. It'll look directly at it, and in our browser here to the left, you're going to see that a new tab is open, the Sketch drop-down menu here. Um, we're going to go down, click that little uh, drop down arrow, and then choose Sketch 1, right click, Save as DXF. And in this case, I'm just going to save it as, I've already got a year 3, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to replace it. And now when I go into Corel Draw, I can go to Import, and then I'm going to find my gear 3. And then I can leave all this information the same. This is ha having to do with the units, um, whether it's metric or English units, and then the scaling. Um, it tells you what the original size is and it tells you what the new size will be if you jack with any of these numbers here. I'm um, we'll leave them the same, one to one scale, and I'm gonna click OK. Now when I, I'm gonna move it to the side here. When I click, you'll notice that this is my gear. The only problem is this is all in individual pieces. So the easiest way I know to get this as one solid gear is to use my smart fill tool, click inside it once, and go to our selection arrow and then drag this over. Now, the first thing I like to do is get rid of the fill and then I wanna make this a hairline and then I always change it to red just so visually I know that that is a hairline. Um, it's just, just some process that I do 
uh, so that I know um, that I've already taken that step. The only other thing that I'll, I'll tell you about on this is this circle can be changed. We could have put those parameters in um, back in Fusion 360, but we can actually change this if we want by um, breaking our curve apart. Now, my screen says arrange. Somehow I got my workspace all messed up to be like an old version of the software. Normally yours is gonna say object right here. Um, but I think it was before X6 that it used to say arrange. And I'm gonna go to break curve apart. And now when I deselect the object and select just the circle, I can put this in as whatever diameter I want. In this case, I'm gonna put it in as 0.25. And then don't forget to regroup this together. So if you move this, you won't get a center point of your gear all messed up. Um, it's ready to be cut. If you had another gear that was gonna mesh with this, um, something like, let me get it to about right here. Yeah, somewhere close to there. Um, get a little bit closer. This is about where those gears would mesh very well. Um, if you cut both these out on your laser and you have the right kerf of your laser set, um, these are going to run really smooth. Um, now, if you were to put this on like a plate, you would need to be very careful in your hole placement for the axles to go in so that you don't have them um, pushing too tight together. Um, there's, there's kind of formulas to that. There's also some of that information in Fusion 360 that you could have adjusted or tweaked to make this maybe a little bit runs a little bit smoother or more efficiently. Um, but probably for what you're wanting to do, this is gonna work um, exactly right. Um, well, anyway, have fun with it. Draw something cool in Fusion 360 and leave a comment. Um, let me know, let me know if this helps you. And we'll catch you later.